Even if you have never worked in a carburetor, you're probably already familiar with how a float works inside the float bowl. The reason for that is you've got one at home in the back of your toilet. If you go home and lift the top off your toilet tank, you're going to see that the tank is filled with a specific level of water. That water level is governed by a float. When some of the water inside the tank is used, the water level in the tank will begin to go down. As the water goes down, the float that's sitting in the water begins to fall along with the water level. There is a needle valve on top of the arm, which as the water goes down, allows the valve to open, water starts entering into the tank. As water enters into the tank, the water level begins to climb. As it climbs, the float comes up, the needle valve comes up, and shuts the water off at just the right level. Now in your float bowl, the float works the exact same way to regulate the level of fuel in the bowl. And by extension, it's regulating the level of fuel inside the jet, inside the carburetor. Now, I've taken the top off of the, fuel, the float bowl of another carburetor, and I've got it here so you can see it. And there's the float. You can see it right there. It moves up and down with the fuel. And if I tip it upside down and I pull the pin out, I'm going to remove the float. And right there, if she'll cooperate with me, is the needle valve that goes up and down. When it comes down, fuel is allowed to come in through this hole right here. When the float goes up, the needle valve goes in and turns the valve off. Okay? Now, in our next video, we're going to see what can go wrong inside this system.